towards this majestic outfit. Uh, but before we get started with the run here, uh, we do want to take a little moment for some serious time. Amber, if you wouldn't mind. So before we get started, uh, we just want to take a moment to dedicate our run to a close friend that we lost on New Year's Eve. Uh, the only kid was a member of the Sonic Speedrun community, and they supported us as not just a colleague in our event work to together, but also as a good friend who was always excited to hype up the achievements of everyone in the community. We miss you so much, and we hope this run today would have made you proud. This one's for you, kid. This one's for you, buddy. Uh, yep. My name is Amber Cyprin. My pronouns are they, them. I will be playing as Tails for this run. Uh, I had originally planned to use a hand cam, but instead I'm just going to show you a picture of uh, the arcade stick I used for this run instead real quick. Uh, it's an 8-bit dough arcade stick, uh, and I have my input display in the bottom left of my camera, so feel free to follow along there. Uh, and uh, Argic, uh, what I'm is there. your control situation? I'm using two giant white gloves. You're showing one right now, because if I put the controller down, I'm not going to pick it back up again. Again. But I am, oh, like, let's see, but there you go, you can see the other controller, so we are holding them. But uh, are you all ready for some Sonic 4 Episode 2? Are you ready for some hype? Because we are going to bring it, it's going to be thick, it's going to be fast. Amber, are you ready? I'm most certainly ready. All right, without further ado, here we go in three, two, one, here we go! Sonic 4 Episode 2 Co-op Run. This game has multiplayer built into it. It is the definitive way of playing the game here. I'm going to be controlling Sonic. Amber is going to be controlling Tails. We are independent of each other. And unlike the classic game, where if one person goes off screen, they are disappearing, it is not happening. We have the lovely safety ball here, as we just demonstrated. And the way it's going to work is simple. As Sonic, it is my job to go as fast as I can and get myself through until I have to stop and pass the lead over to Tails. Because we are going to be using both Sonic and Tails very much through the run as quickly as we can. The reason for that is this, flight. Because Tails is going to fly, he can fly independently of Sonic, doesn't have to carry Sonic, doesn't have to slow down the world for it. However, Sonic runs faster, so after the third set of rings, we're going to jump, we're going to run our way through. And the way Sonic works is simple. He has the homing attack when enemies are on screen. If there are no enemies on screen, he has a dash. The dash is how I speed up and go really, really fast. The spin dash is available in the game, but we're not going to be using the spin dash as much as we can because I want to be in the safety ball. Once we come out of the safety ball, get over all the platform and the tail gets away from us, we're going to leg it to the end of the stage and then I'm going to hand it over to Amber, who's going to explain everything that Tails does and some of the funky other things we have to do. All right, well, first and foremost, the main thing that we have to worry about between levels is uh, menuing correctly to the act that we want to be playing. Uh, we don't want to repeat any acts that would be, you know, kind of a time loss, imagine that. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about Tails and Tails' movement of it, uh, abilities. So when he's independent of Sonic like he is in co-op, uh, he can do a couple of things. He can fly and swim independent of Sonic. There's normally partner actions uh, that allow Sonic and Tails to team up. Uh, Tails grabs him and, you know, has limited, uh, unlimited swim, but limited flight. Uh, very limited flight but we don't care about that in co-op because we can go on our own. Uh, and also we want to avoid using partner actions as much as we can simply because they happen to uh, freeze the screen and uh, that is fairly slow, come on. Um, but uh, one of the reasons I play on Arcade Stick is because Tails' swim controls uh, are kind of clunky and I want to lock onto my directionals, uh, my diagonal directionals very, very easily. Uh, with this, and I'll do that later on uh, in Sky Fortress when it comes to flying the tornado, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, one awesome thing about Tails' independent flight is that he has way more stamina than when he is carrying Sonic. Um, so I would not normally be able to fly up this high if we were in single player and using the tag flight. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically Tails' movement. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that he is also extremely slow. Uh, so his acceleration is awful, and his best form of movement on the ground to get to top speed is to spin dash and jump out of it to be able to be at his top running speed, which is still pretty slow. But uh, I'm going to pass it over to Argic as he explains the Ultra Ball. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm so glad we have a Pokemon run happening later because we can use Ultra Ball a lot, and I love it. Ultra Ball is the fastest way of moving in this game, if Arg actually doesn't holding attack off the spring there. 
Uh, it can only be used in the partner form, which is really, really important. So Amber being unsaveable here is useless. But we cannot activate it yet until we see the tutorial monitor. Tutorial monitor is right over here. We're going to use the Ultra Ball to go super fast through the stage and also become invincible and also manage to take a little shortcut here. So we're going to bust through some walls. The Ultra Ball is going to allow us to take some routes that we otherwise would not be able to. And uh, the way it works is simple. There are three speeds, fast, medium, and slow. If we bonk, we will drop speed, and then we will immediately drop Ultra Ball because we do not want it. This might be a little bit late. Let's see what happens here. We're going to launch ourselves. We did not, so if you fly back up, we'll just go and try that again. That's fine. Second time's charming. Wait for this one to come through. Wait for it to line up on us, and Ultra Ball again. We're going to literally launch ourselves. Woohoo! over the stage there. And I'm going to jump after this ring down into our secret shortcut. But as I was saying, if you bump, you lose speed. So you go from fast to medium and then from medium to slow as you're about to see. This is the only time we will intentionally bonk because coming out of it and going into it is slow based on the time freeze that we have. This is why in the co-op run we will try and use the call button rather than our partner actions unless we're going to get big stints of the Ultra Ball here. So we're just gonna try and keep in this for as long as we can, jumping over the spring, jumping over the items that are gonna get in our way here. Landing on that segment, which is really, really good. Running our way through here, we'll see if we get the good upside here. We're not gonna get it, let's gonna bonk on the side of that, so we're just gonna come down. Once I come out of this, Amber is going to take over and fly, which is a co-op exclusive thing. Once again, as Amber was saying, Tails' solo flight here is very, very useful, very, very important. And in fact, it's so important that Amber's gonna get further than I ever can here, because the game doesn't like me. Let's see what happens at the end here. You're going to go for it. I'm just going to come and catch you because I'm faster. Nice. <laughs> I mean. So you know what our partner actions are now. And the most important one being is uh, the Ultra Ball. You will never, if we can help it, see the swim one. And then you may only see the flight one if we need to save ourselves. But we're going to go into the boss. And I need to remember to menu to the boss. It's kind of important. Yes, please do. <laughs> uh, so Arctic brought up the whole, like, we don't want to use partner actions because, you know, they freeze the screen. I brought that up, too. Uh, we do have a dedicated call button. But first, we're going to uh, partner roll all the way over to the cutscene over here so we stay together and uh, the camera doesn't have to pan nearly as long. So Eggman's going to come here, shake his fist angrily at us, and he's going to zoom off, and we're going to follow him. So... Uh, this is going to look a lot like the Aquatic Rune boss at first, don't worry, uh, it is not the Aquatic Rune boss, but uh, let me explain what we call the Insta-Call button. So uh, we have the Freeze button, but we also have this, where I can bring Sonic over to me instantly, even while in flight. Uh, he can jump out and use a, uh, a homing attack, which is very important. So the, uh, the boss's weak point is hiding in that bulb there, so we're going to fly up. Uh, and we're going to bop him with Sonic, like so, twice. Uh, he's going to close, be invincible for a moment, and then he's going to do it all over again. And I need to time my flight uh, just so I don't get too tired and uh, fall down to the ground. Uh, let me, there we go. And he's going to go and call two more tendrils here, and uh, one of them is going to lock onto us and try to slam us, and I'm going to spin dash to the other side of the screen when that happens. And then we're going to hit Eggman once, twice, three times, and this is way faster than the intended strat for single player where you have to freeze uh, the screen constantly. But uh, now we're going into our desperation mode. Uh, and this is something that every boss has in the game. Uh, the tendrils are gonna pump the bulb with energy and the bulb is going to try to fire lasers. We're not gonna let that happen. We're instead going to uh, okay. yeah. call our gig up here. He's going to uh, not fire his laser. I'm gonna refresh my flight by landing. And that's gonna be the boss. And uh, we apologize to the sound crew in advance. We're actually not really sorry. Yong Kbar. This thing makes a horrible noise and we love it. <laughs> Let's see who gets to jump. Yo, you nailed got it. it. Nice. Nailed, nailed it. it. Oh, so happy. All right, we're gonna head into the next world. This is the end of the tutorial stages. We have four worlds, each with four acts and four bosses at the end of it. So we're gonna go ahead to what is, in our opinion, the most beautiful world in the game. We're about to go to White Park. I know Christmas just passed, but hopefully you're all still having a bit of that winter spirit here, because you're about to see one of the most beautiful stages. And from now on, we're gonna be starting all our stages in Ultra Ball form, because it's speedy, it's fast, it's fun. Let's go. So we're going to go all the way through here. And at, once again, at the end, Amber is going to jump out and go flying because like other Sonic games here, top route is best route. So we're going to try and save the top route as much as we can. Can 
can't do this in single player because if you try it in single player, Tails is not able to fly. You cannot do double partner actions without hitting the ground. So we're going to run our way through here, push the snowball, and then Amber's going to fly away with Tails. I'm going to just wait behind because there's no point in me doing this. Get called into the Ultra Ball here, hit the spring onto the second set, and away we go. Big old jump up to the top right here. And this is where the Ultra Ball comes in really handy because one, there's a hole in the ground. There it was, we went right over it. And two, the gimmick of this stage is this compact snow. Uh, I did not get my jump there as always, because I never do, thank you very much. But there's this compact snow over here that is going to close in behind us. You can only go through this while you're in Ultra Ball form. And if you accidentally bonk three times to knock out of Ultra Ball or press the X button to come out of it, you will just die because it crushes you. We're going to count our trees here. Fourth three we jump. So one, two, three, fourth three we jump. This allows us to run over, land onto the booster, and away we go. Amber trying to just stay in the air because the way this game works with the pullback mechanic is the character that is in the air is considered the safer one. So sometimes you'll see the game be a little bit wonky and decide, okay, no, Sonic was further ahead, but I'm pulling you back to Tails. That's simply because Tails was higher. We will be using this to our advantage if we can, uh, but it's Sonic 4, it's episode two. The game sometimes decides not. Speaking to decide not, let's see if the game gives us our speed or not. Please don't steal my speed. Hey, didn't Yay! steal our speed. This allows us to get up to the top right, go way through. Sometimes the game says, you don't have any speed at the end of Ultra Ball here. And uh, Amber, please keep me alive at this point if I manage to whiff it. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try. <laughs> so I need to jump here, hit these enemies, hit the sprite. We got it. Nice. And Tails was there to keep me alive in case I whiffed it. And we did not. And we did not go into the bonus stage. So that's a good level. Yeah, you don't want us to go into the bonus no, stage. No, no, please no, please no. All right, act two. All right. So we're going to move into what is my favorite level in the, in the uh, game, White Park Act 2. It's the most beautiful. Uh, it's the most fun, in my opinion, as well. There's a lot of Ultra Ball shenanigans, and it's also got great music. So we're going to start off with the Ultra Ball. Arctic's going to attempt to jump over a spring that is just kind of like a time waster. Uh, maybe we'll get it. Maybe we won't. It's no big deal if we don't. Hey! Uh, nice! Hey! <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump here. Argic's gonna hit that speed booster. And uh, you'll notice already the main gimmick of this level is going in the foreground and background with these springs. Uh, so Argic's gonna keep uh, running down the, uh, the roller coaster tracks until we get to a platforming section. He can do this first section here just by bouncing off these enemies, no problem. And then I'm going to come out yeah, um, take over. and fly over this because this is a little easier for Tails. And then we're not gonna land on that because it'll cut us off from this route. And we're gonna spin dash away. No! Bye, Argic. Have a nice trip. So we're going to keep going uh, along the path here uh, very, very quickly. And when we come back into the foreground, we're going to hit a checkpoint and then hit a spring up to a um, up to this ledge. And then we're going to hold down and fall straight down into the single spin dash or single tap spin dash, my bad, um, and then fly on up. And then I will have Argic unball, and we're going to go into ultra ball form, and we're going to go through a loop. Whoop. And then we're going to go and jump over these springs that would bring us into the back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth foreground. And then we're going to go roll our way right back to, or right over to the end of the stage there. Go on, Very fast, 113. 113 That's is so good. good. That's so good, that right? so good. All right, white part at three times. This, after your best stage, you do have to, unfortunately, have a worst stage. And all I'm going to say is, this is Amber's worst stage now. Do da, do da. Amber doesn't like this I stage. I really don't like this stage. This oh, the doodad day. <laughs> so, yeah, Amber doesn't like this stage because unfortunately Amber has to swim. Uh, so, what I'm going to try and do is navigate my way through the stage as quickly as I can using Sonic Speed. And then, anytime I get the chance, I will call Amber. Uh, but the game is doing the annoying thing and not letting us fly. But we juggled our way up the top. Yo, Amber, yeah! Big old yes. jump off the end of that one. I love that so much. That's very good. All right, here you go. All get right. the fly up, pull me through. Up here. I'm going to land down here. We're going to... Oh, I might be too close here. We'll see what happens. This might be interesting. Uh, do we get it? Come on, game. We got it. Oh, oh we bonked, but we still got the, the first part of it, which was important. Exactly. So All right. what, is, what Amber is referring to there is the fact that in the stage, there are these annoying seal enemies that really enjoy uh, just blocking our passage. And unfortunately, once they block your passage, there's nothing you can do about it. And uh, it's going to be a case of when we get to a certain area, Amber is going to be taken over and I'm going to be in safety ball park. We're going to run our way through to this point as quickly as we can. I need to make sure Amber flies up this section here uh, because we do not want to go down the bottom route. Bottom route is slow. Again, labyrinth at absolute zero. We're going to skip like all of the labyrinth here. I need to do some jumps. Big up jump number one, go through. Big up jump number two, let's go. All the way through to the end, do the jump here, land on the snow part, down to the bottom, and this is where Amber takes over. 
Uh, so I'm just going to fly up. Oh, and we're going to go up there. I'm not going to fly yeah. up because the game won't let me. But that's there fine. You're already in fly form here. So while in the water, Tails loves uh, to get hit. That's fine. Uh, just going to jump up. going to fly. Amber's going to line up with the rings ASAP because these sea lions are making giant ice blocks. You literally have to take a dip if you get caught between them because of the way that it is laid out. It is no fun. But we're coming up to the end of the stage now. It was relatively good for what we are normally at. 136 is not bad at all. And we don't, oh, have, to worry. We don't have to worry about Big Ring because, uh, yeah. Uh, now, I do have inside here uh, because I am hands-free right now. My hands are on the controller. I do have a hands-free kit here. I need to make a call to the uh, spring delivery, sorry, detection service, not delivery service. Let me dial the right number here. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Uh, hello, is that the Spring Detection Service? Hello, this is the Spring Detection Service. How can I assist? So we're coming into a boss fight here. Metal Sonic's being a pain in the bum, and he's uh, dropped a lot of springs for us. Uh, I need somebody to detect them. Oh, absolutely. I will send a two-tailed fox boy right your way, and he will be happy to assist you with his services. Uh, and just a quick uh, description of our services, uh, the two-tailed fox boy is going to be ahead of Sonic, uh, trying to stay next to Metal Sonic to uh, get early hits. There we go, like so. But also, he has another function. He will be able to uh, hit springs that will send you into the background, which is very slow, uh, ahead of time. And as long as the blue hedgehog is paying attention, he'll be able to realize, oh, there's a spring. I should jump over that. And then he'll be able to use the instant call button to bring the two-tailed fox boy back into the foreground so that he can resume his services. Oh, that sounds Is there anything else? <laughs> yeah, is there anything else I can assist you with? I think we're good. Please do send him over. Uh, one thing, what is Metal Sonic doing with these different attacks? Uh, so these attacks are kind of RNG, uh, except they're not. Ooh, we jumped over that spring pretty well, actually. Um, so he's actually going to break the... Wow, we skipped the lightning phase entirely. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, he, there's normally a, uh, a very slow phase where he can throw uh, lightning walls down on the tracks. Uh, we skipped that entirely uh, without a care in the world, and we went straight into the, uh, as Argic likes to call it, the, calm, uh, the come on and slam come and welcome and to slam. the jam phase. Come on and slam! Yeah! So we're but uh, now that we've... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, we're coming up to the final death version here, and that's one. The question is, will the Fox Boy get hit or not? Let's find out. So gonna run. I'm just going to run right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to kill you this time. We'll see what happens. I like... No, oh, damn it! You <laughs> jerk! <laughs> All right, all right, all right. We didn't miss the phase. No, we didn't miss the phase, at least. All right, let's speed our way to the end here. Let's see if Ark hits the gap. Oh, not even close. What is this, Ark? Oh, no, no, no. no, no. no. Ah. Oh, oh, no, I went over. <laughs> we finally hit it. Uh, so there we go, two Eventually. minutes stage on the boss. That was not bad, because we skipped lightning phase there. Uh, but we are yeah. now going to head into the stage. From the extreme cold to the extreme heat, we're heading over to Oil Desert, a.k.a. This is what happens when Oil Ocean runs out of oil. Um, and uh, once again, we're going to start in ball form. And once again, Arg is going to try and not make a dog's dinner of this. I'm going to use the slopes in this stage to try and do a number of cool jumps. We'll see if we get them. If not, Amber's going to laugh at me. Starting with this first one. There we go. He actually did the jump. And he made it. I did good. I'm proud of you. So we're going to get on this one. Going to jump over. Going to wait. Going to get like big old jump. Didn't he make it? Jump over. Still didn't fall in the hole. Are you proud of me, Amber? I'm very proud yes. of you, Arg. Yes. So th this is a stage right. here where we're going to run across the quicksand. If you slow in the quicksand, you're going to fall in it. It's not good like it's happening right now. I'm going to call Tails over to me after I jump, get damage deliberately, giving Tails some iframes to fly over the beetles, and we're just going to go through. Turns out Tails doesn't really like the music that much. I got stuck under the thing. It's like a perfect jump to get on it. Stuck. So we're going to go over, skip the thing over here, pull Tails down as well, just to keep the screen as close to us as we can. Oh, avoid the, the speed shoes there, because surprisingly, you don't need the speed shoes. I'm going to make sure I don't launch myself off the other side of the world here. Get Tails to come out of the ball form, and now we're going to perform another couple of yeets here. So we're going to go around, spin around, up to the other side, big old jump. I failed it, so I need you to fly, please. Uh, if you do have a problem with your jump, make sure you have a fox with you to fly up back to where you actually need to go. Go and do the same one, hopefully not miss this one, which we didn't. Did we get the ending at the end? We did, that's fine. And now we're going to pass it over to Tails, who is going to be dealing with the sandstorm. Get your Darudes in chat, because we're just going to run and jump over here. Can you, oh my god, can we just like sandstorm? We both missed that. Yeah, we yeah. both jumped over the yeah. booster. <laughs> sandstorm is being a butt. There we go. Your turn, Tails. All right. So we're going to spin dash jump over here, get carried by the sandstorm a little bit. Same deal here. And we're going to stop and land on this platform. Let go of the button and 
thread the needle right through those uh, those enemies there. It is a deadly drop, by the way, uh, in that section, but thankfully the reason why we have Sonic stay in ball form uh, is just so that in the case that I get tired or I get hit, uh, we can always come back out. He can come out of ball form and then we co can go into our proper par uh, partner fly. Yay. Now, uh, Moving on to Oil Desert Zone Act 2, also known as Ultra Ball the Level. <laughs> I'm done, done. Uh, we don't open an Ultra Ball, right? No. It's also Duck Zone, so uh, some ducks are going to serenade us while we're here. Oh. Come, on. Come over here. So we're going to slide down this Chaos Cola and hopefully jump in time. There we go. An Ultra Ball immediately. We're going to zoom on up here. Nice, nice jump. And uh, what we're hoping is to not hit uh, a platform that's going to come in and out of the sand. Uh, if we bonk off of it, it's no big deal. We'll keep going for a bit and then uh, re-ball because, as Argic explained way back in Sylvania Castle 3, uh, this ball does have three different speeds, and every time you bonk, you lose uh, a level of speed, and just, like, it's not worth keeping up. Uh, so right Aww. here, we're going to bonk on that. It's okay. Uh, we're going to go under these spikes first, up this slope, unball. Reball and Arctic's gonna try to go for a jump here that'll skip a, a small like little bit of the stage here. Nope. Missed it, but that's okay. Being late means you're not actually really like losing anything. It's no big deal. Uh, being early would have shot us all the way back, which would have been a massive time loss. But we're gonna slide down the Chaos Cola one more time and all the way to the end of the stage as we go into Oil Desert Act 3, which is 66.66% Tails and 33.33% Sonic. Boo, you changed your number! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did, because I remembered how to map. Oh, I like that. Wait a minute. It is 0.001% sand, though. Oh, I mean, I would say there's a lot more sand involved in this one. But yeah, as Amber alludes to here, we're going to use Sonic Speed as quickly as we can, but there's a problem. There's a crude thread waiting for us. In fact, there's three of them. These giant sand silos, they are filling with sand, which means Sonic has to wait, but we have our buddy Tails here, who has single control, allows us to run our way through this area and not have to worry about it. Once we come out, though, this is where Sonic has to take over with the speed. Let's see what we can do. So I'm going to immediately miss that. So I'm just going to get Tails to fill me up and just fly me over because this is embarrassing. So it's just going to go, and there we go. Yeah, we're just going to pretend that none of this ever happened because Arc went down yep, at the very I'm start. Drop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in area number two here, this is where Sonic is actually needed because unfortunately Tails does not have a homing attack. And because Tails doesn't have the homing attack here, it means that we are unable to break through it. And uh, Sonic has to keep up, or in this case, Amber has to use the call button, and we just get to run our way through this section. Once we come out of here, we're going to take the top route, hit a set of sand. What is going on here? Thank you, video I game. No, It does not let me homing attack that at all. Uh, but we're going to come through, I'm going to let you pull over and fly up. It's going to call me through, and away we go. That's nice. Down we go into the sand, and down to our lovely little bone right here with the end of the game. We're then going to use, once again, another Ultra Ball. Amber's already in position, ready to go for it. I just, oh, we didn't, that's good. Yeah, no, that was, that was just enough. One, two, look for the tippy top of the third one. That allows us to run down, get a jump over the bottom here, runs all the way through. Tails is going to jump down before Sonic, spin back your way through, all the way to the end of the stage. And one final silo for us. I'm just going to spin back jump through. Go up the top there, let Tails take over. And once again, Tails is going to just skip all the sand stuff. I'm going to come up. Amber's going to land once again on the spike, or maybe make it, let's find out. Yo! Speedy! Nice! Very speedy, very wonderful. And we're going to come into our, uh, our boss of this stage. All right, so I hope you like, uh, you liked the Nier Automata run earlier in the, in the marathon. That was a pretty good race. Um... Uh, so we'd like to joke that uh, <laughs> that Yoko Taro designed this boss. Uh, you'll understand when we get there. But uh, we like to play a game within this boss. Uh, so it's mostly auto-scrollers, so and in just a moment, we're going to turn it over to Edo Bean. But first, let's explain this. Uh, the rules the rules are very simple, uh, folks in chat. Uh, there's going to be the boss in the background. He, you know, eventually makes himself vulnerable every so often. We try to hit him. Big deal. Uh, while he's invulnerable, he's going to be smashing the walls and causing crates to fall, you know, down. There's going to be a line of eight crates across every row. Uh, we have to dodge the crates, and uh, Argic is going to stay on the left. I'm going to stay on the right. Argic's already no, cheating. No, Amber, you're already um, cheating. I can't believe you're nah, already you're no, cheating. No, you're cheating. You're cheating. You're cheating. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to try to get seven hits on the boss, and we're going to see who can get the most hits um, out of seven on the boss before he moves to his desperation move. Uh, so that being said, while we're uh, doing this, it'll be taken away. We've got quite some time. All right, we have a $550 donation from York Mengan. I hope I pronounced that right. That said, Arctic Sonic cosplay is a go. Awesome. 
awesome. I have no idea how you'll manage to run the game with those gloves on. Good luck to Arjik and Amber on their run. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. We also have a $15 donation from Mike Nick Omer. I hope I pronounced that right. So I'm still sorry. They said, I donated $10 to see that Sonic costume. I am appropriately horrified. Good morning from Australia. We also have $50 from Dying the Human that says, you may not like it, but this is what Geek Co-op speedrunning looks like. A big shout out to Art and Amber for making this amazing run happen. Uh, Ailis, thank you for your $10 donation. They say, I've been looking forward to this run ever since the schedule dropped. Good luck, Amber and Arjik. You're going to smash it. Race Pro UK, thank you for your $25 donation. You say, when Arjik and Amber are in the tornado, does that make them flying batteries? Uh huh, I get uh -huh. it. <laughs> 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 Uh, Final Flame, thank you for $25 donation. You say, uh, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this Sonic costume and my money. <laughs> and we also have a $50 donation from Nux Tema that says, shout out to the Sonic with the screaming Arjik inside. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's totally. <laughs> I'm not screaming. I just want to pipe up real quick. Uh, Arctic definitely got six hits on the boss to my one. Yo! So, uh, I GG's Arctic. Woo! I wasn't Yay! paying attention. Oh. Uh, he's also going to... Uh, the boss is going to step on the Lego, by the way, and uh, and take a nap in just a moment. But uh, go on. Keep going with Donos. Got another uh, time for a little couple more. Gotcha. Uh, Fluffy Squirrel donates $50 and says, came here to see Art, but apparently he got stuck for Sonic. Hmm. I also have a $25 donation from Oreo Sky that says, wait a minute, not just Amber, not just Argate, but both Amber and Argate? What is this, a co-op run or something? No way, I can't believe this. Also, Art, you've got a little something on your uh, everywhere. Good luck on the run to both of you. I'm looking forward to the famous Tales Underwater Wall Climb. Put this donation half half towards Runner's Choice. Oh, thank you very much. And there we go. That is the end of that stage right now. But have no fear because we've got more time for donations coming up very, very soon. Before we go into the stage, though, I do want to turn around and say, I never said it was a good cosplay, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, Amber, Amber, explain what we've got coming on here. Okay, so this may look familiar to you or to anyone who has ever played Sonic 2 uh, or any game that has had Sky Chase or Sonic Adventure, which is coming up next, or, uh, you know, Sonic uh, Pocket Adventure or Mania or, like, anything with a Sky Chase. Anyways, uh, I have full control of the tornado as Tails. Like, if you look at my input display, I can, I'm the one who is fully rotating in the plane. Argic is making, uh, like, a battering ram and just existing on top of the plane. Uh, Sonic is completely invincible when spinning like that, except to projectiles. So as long as I don't run him into any projectiles, he'll be fine, and I can use him to uh, smack enemies and do whatever I want with him. Um, but uh, we're going to end up hitting uh, parts of the stage. Oh, hey, look, it's it's Metal Sonic, and he caught a Pokemon. It looks like he caught Moby and Kyogre. Huh, that's new. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're going to have a Pokemon battle with him later in this zone and later in this act even. But first, we have a mock speed section. There's two of them in the stage. Uh, I have full control of just up and down right now, and I have to follow the trail of rings uh, to these uh, crates that are kind of uh, come up, and I'm going to barrel roll into them to break through. If I don't, we die. Uh, put bluntly, but uh, so there will be another one later on. Uh, but now it's just kind of like waiting until that next mock speed section happens, and you know, Metal Sonic's just gonna taunt us for a bit. Um, and then a little later on, we're gonna have the Pokemon battle with Metal Sonic. Uh, while I have a blue shiny uh, shaman on my plane, uh, we'll end up knocking cannonballs back and forth, playing a little bit of volleyball, if you will. But uh, that's about the, the, the gist of this act. Uh, Edelbean. How would you like another two minutes of donations? Probably like right. four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, um, four we, minutes. <laughs> we have $50 donation from Mr. Rez that says, out of all the things that happened in 2022, seeing Kizaron be complimented by our, by our kick in a full Sonic suit was not in my bingo card. GDQ just keeps getting better. Could we get a Sonic finger wag from our kick from our chat? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have 
$200 from Crown Guardsman that says, I'm loving this Sonic bug. Argan and Amber absolutely rushing through this. Love to see it. Donation to Runner's Choice. Fingers donates $100 that said had to donate because of that costume, Argan. Keep up the good work, DDQ. Mendez donates $50 that says, Argic and Amber, this is an incredible run and it's been a pleasure watching all your practice and getting to know both of you. Oh, and Arg, what the tail says while playing golf? Uh, I don't know. Sonic 4! <laughs> I just want to jump in real quick. Uh, I'm tired of playing the game, so I'm going to go take a nap. Uh, I have no control during this segment, and it's up to Argic to not die. Um, so I'm going to take a, a quick moment to hydrate, and the rest of you in chat should too. And uh, Edelbean, I hope you've got tea or something near you, because uh, it's time for more donations. Yay! <laughs> Uh, Tayar, thank you for $50. They say, hi, Argan and Amber. I think you are awesome. Keep going fast. We also have a $50 donation from Tiny Tim that says, hey, y'all, donating for the amazing Sonic 4 run and the always awesome Argan and Amber. You are both fantastic people, and it's an honor and a privilege to know you both. Good luck with the run. Cheers. P.S. Loving the suit, Argan. We have uh, $100 from Duke Firebird that says, Hey, Amber and Art, I just wanted to say thank you both for being part of my life and being good friends. Love you both. I don't know what I would do without you. I'll let the rubbers decide where this goes. Keep going, Edo. You got like you another for, minute. Oh, I can go Yeah, in. yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. Grant, this thank is you for $25. <laughs> I have thought this interview was for the Pokemon run because Amber looks just like a 3DS Pokemon trainer. Good luck with Sonic 4, Amber, and Argic. Keep going fast. And then we also have a, ooh, we have a $50 donation from Fuya that says, a Sonic haiku. The blue hedgehog runs, zooming into the distance to defeat Eggman. Beautiful haiku. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, got time for one more. Yep. Uh, all right, Turn of Court, thank you for $10. He says, I simply must donate during the Sonic vlog because Sonic was my first introduction to the wonderful world of speed running. Good luck and go fast. Thank you so much for all of those generous donations. By the way, y'all are fantastic. It's going to a great cause as well. But uh, coming up next is uh, Sky Fortress Act 2. Argif, Ar Argif? Argic, if you would care to uh, explain this one. It, it almost wasn't, because I was wondering which stage we were on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is Sky oh, Fortress. Oh boy. This is Sky Fortress Act 2. It looks very similar to the opening of Wing Fortress, but that's about it. Uh, we are on the giant Sky Fortress here, and we're going to do it as we normally do. Top route is best route. Kill's going to take over the flying at the top here. I'm going to try and keep up by doing big jumps and dashes as well, getting stuck into the fans and onto the enemies here. Uh, the gimmick of this stage is this lovely little great system that we have. It's very great. Uh, so we're going to run our way through here, going into our Ultra Ball form to spin dash our way all the way through. And we'll see if I can time a big old jump at the top of this hill here. Big old jump up over. That should be right into the fans there. Nailed it down. Amber's going to take over, solo fly up, and call me with the button to speed our way around. When we get out of the button here, we're going to run through. Another great's coming up, but this time it's going to be Amber that takes off. I'm going to go up to the top right again, landing on the side of a platform. And uh, hope, oh no, I'm feeling Amber. Let's see. Up we go. Very no, you're nice. Fine. You're fine. And then speedy shoes, only speedy shoes that we get in the game. You're going to run, two, three, four, jump up, big old jump, missing the downward side as it goes straight down. Wait for our rings, one, two, jump over onto the fan, wait for the plane to go off, the plane to not go off, we managed to get over it, that's fine. Jump our way through, get up to this section, jump over, run down to the bottom here. I ended up missing the spring, but that's all right, let's go for it. Down the bottom side here at the angle, and then the final great section of the stage. We've got mines on the walls, I need to make sure I don't hit. If I've lined up correctly, I get a straight line through up towards the middle so we don't hit the jet engines, and away we go in a 123. That's a stage yes. for you. That is a really good stage there. So uh, we're actually going to be moving into Sky Fortress 3, which is, uh, in our opinion, the hardest stage in the game, mm -hmm. especially uh, in co-op. Uh, so the stakes are high. Uh, and it's it's also going to start a little similarly, and I, I apologize to the sound crew as we spin dash, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but uh, there's going to be jet boosters and platforms and deadly drops, and Argic's probably going to die a couple of times. Hey! Or not, hey! I mean, he didn't die! I didn't die! Well, no, I hope I I'm don't die. You. I need to be the one that takes on the lead of this part of the stage anyway. Let's see if we can do it. So we're going to come up here. Tails is going to be with us. I missed the jump there, but that's all right. I missed the jump there as well, but that's all right. Oh, we're going to send in the bottom right. Pull me up, pull me up, pull me up. Nice, that's fine. Uh, just go for it. Yeah, just fly over. And then you'll have yeah. to right. Yeah, we're fine. Go. Nice. Good recovery. So ideally, we didn't want to do that, but that's all right. Because we got to go up and go through into the Death Egg little onion ring here. It, it's the Death Egg onion ring. That's how I can describe it. We need to take some of these, but these ones here, we do not. So I'm just going to let Tails take over because we know exactly where we're going to go, where we're going to end up. Amber's going to reflect their flight. Reflect their flight. Uh, Ours going to forget the English language. And uh, we're going to run our way through the stage here and see how this goes. We're going to jump into the air. Tails didn't hit the thing. Our dead Tails going to call me back. And the homing attack is just not going to activate until it finally did. But when we get through here, we're going to try and do a very precise jump. Let's see if we can grab it ultra ball into the jump using our invincibility. If it doesn't work, I'm going to pass right over to Amber, and Amber is going to try and take over. Let's see how this goes. We go up the other side. GG here. Nah, we fudged it. All right, so just going to wait here. Spin back off. Let you go. Oh, I need to come down with you. That's fine. Uh, spin back from there. Away we go. Under, fly, and in we go. You can see those diamonds with Sonic's face on it. If we fall down there, it means it's death. Here's the angry chickens. Angry chickens are evil. And then this is where this is going to become the Amber show because Amber's going to take over as we get up here, spin back down, jump, and away we go. Amber's going to go into the safety ball, and that is it for me. So Amber's going to get through these cycles, trying not to get squished, trying making sure that we get up on these platform cycles, deliberately hitting that checkpoint because we could get engines here. We're going to fall down on that one if we make it through in time. Over we go, run our way through onto the spring, up to the top, dodging the blocks here, straight up the top, making sure we don't get squished into the final set of our onion ring, and we'll ultra ball our way to the stage. Should be finishing in about a 202 or a 203. Not our fastest stage, but definitely not the worst we've done either. Yes, we, didn't we die. did not die, and that is the name of the game in Sky Fortress 3. Especially for our GDQ run. Oh yeah, from this run, we are now going to head over into the boss fight. We are going to have a Pokemon battle rematch with Metal Sonic and the M Mobian Kyogre. Turns out Moby and Kyogre has a few extra moves that we didn't know about. This is like fighting at level 70, I guess. Uh, so we're going to run our way through here. Amber is going to take over because once again, I'm a battering ram. All right, so Argic's going to be in battering ram mode. Uh, I'm actually going to line up right about here-ish. That's where the cutscene's going to start. There we go. Yo, that's the first time I've actually nailed the correct position. Let's go. So that saves a little bit of time. But, uh, so Metal Sonic and his Moby and Kyogre are going to challenge us to a Pokemon battle, and all I have is this measly Moby and Shaman, who is also shiny. Uh, so Shaman's going to do rollout and just stay in rollout. And, uh, this, this fight is RNG, uh, but the first phase, uh, the first move of the first phase is always the same from Metal Sonic. He's going to flip over onto the top of the screen, and I'm going to boop him real quick with a blue hedgehog. Boop! And then he's going to fire some lasers. We're going to avoid these lasers to the best of our ability. There we go. I'm going to boop him for a second hit. And we're going to hope he does that again, because the alternative yes. is he's going... Yes, we're getting the good RNG. Okay, so after we get these two hits, he's going to go into his second phase. And Argit, can you just quickly explain that? So phase two, I'm going to be taking over here, because unfortunately, uh, Metal Sonic is going to go to the right-hand side of the screen here and is going to uh, effectively poke his nose out. I'm going to try and homing attack his nose three times as quickly as I can. The problem is he gets his eye frames, and sometimes the homing attack just doesn't work. We're getting hit by laser beams, we're getting hit by enemies, I need to try and dodge them, and Amber is going to call me back every time. That hit did not count, even though we hit him, because for some reason he still had eye frames. But we're now going to go into the final phase here. This is why Amber plays on control sticks, because we need the right. Let's give us an upward meta. Yes! yes! I don't need to explain no, 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 no. We don't, Let's don't, go. we don't need to explain any of it because we got good RNG. So Amber plays on a hitbox or arcade stick here because Amber needs to hold right and move up and down. If you release right, you get pushed to the left. And if you go off the left of the thing, you die. The downward missile allows you to spin through and away we go. Oh. I'm so chuffed right now. But after after that hype there, we do have to give you a quick warning here. If you remember the run of uh, Mohawk and Headphone Jack, it has a lot of uh, twisty, turny, motion sickness kind of stuff. We're about to get the same in this next level. So if you do suffer from motion sickness or you get dizzy, warning for the next like four minutes, we're about to get some of that, unfortunately. Oh, dead. I'm so okay. happy about that. That's so good. Like, my adrenaline is pumping right now. Oh, that was yeah. so good. That's what we want. That's I'm so what happy. We want.
But we're not done yet. We haven't had perfect RNG in so long. Yeah. We got two more levels though. We got Death Egg Mark II Zone 1, which is a pretty hard stage with gravity shenanigans and twisting shenanigans. Here comes the twisting as we were talking about. I need to make sure we jump off here so we fall down the bottom. Tails needs to come with me because we want to go run the right way of the stage here. Making sure we navigate our way through it. And as you can see, it just loves to twist and turn. I'm going to take over and jump. Jump uh, down, I that's forgot fine. to jump. No, fine. We can get up here. We both forget top. that jump. I was in safety Every ball. Time. Yeah, I was in safety ball. I couldn't do nothing. We're going to come through. Amber's going to fill me up. I'm going to... Uh, no. There we go. That was there perfect. we go. I did not want gravity. No, no. That is the path we don't want. Yeah. So we're just going to run away through. Today I learned... Today, Today I learned if you are in teetering mode, uh, you cannot call your partner. Oh, that's not good. You know what I learned? I learned that Eggman and Melton like anime. Yeah, so uh, we've got Eggman doing his best Beyblade impression because he is a literal Beyblade here. And Metal Sonic is going to be doing his best Frieza impression, complete with Death Balls. Uh, so I need Argic to unball um, um, ASAP. Can get, there we go. There we go. So we're going to go into our Ultra Ball form here and go oh. over, go yeah, under yeah, yeah, Eggman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump get this there early hit. Yep, there we go. So we need to navigate around Eggman, who is completely invincible and can hurt us. And we're going to hit Metal head Sonic head as head soon head as he throws his... Yeah, I got it. We're gonna hit him as soon as he throws his death ball. Uh, Argic's playing uh, chicken here. Hit him and don't kill us. Okay, I used, thank yeah, I used you for the iframe. Yeah. All right, so now we're coming back up to Ooh. part two of the stage here. Uh, it's gonna get topsy turvy again, but this time it's worse because we need to actually navigate it with flight. And sometimes we have to use partner flight as well, which is a little bit annoying. So we're gonna run our way through the stage here as quickly as we can. Gonna get up all the platforms that are gonna be annoying getting in our way. Like this one here, Tails gonna just take over, jump on the platform, and away we go through the rest of it. I got hit by that, I don't know why I'm there. Gonna run, gonna jump no, over there, because you didn't remember the jump, but I did, ha-ha! Uh, run our way through all the way to Speedy Speedies, and then through the rest of the topsy turvy section. This is where Amber takes over. Jaden's telling you to use partner flight. We say no, we use safety ball. We get to run our way through instead. I'm gonna hopefully land on the second spring here. Game, give me it. Yeah! Amber's gonna take over when we get over to this segment because we're gonna spin around. Once we spin around, it's gonna be a case of Amber's gonna take in here. Straight through the box. Up we go to the flight. Around the rest of the stage. And it is not a metal sonic fight without having ye olde fashioned race. The final segment here, the love to just roll us a little bit. Amber's gonna take over, hold the down button to bust, bust through the item boxes that are here. I forgot the word item box. And then when we come down the bottom, we are getting our Metal Sonic race. He's gonna try and mock us. He's like, you, come at me. I'm like, nay, what is me? Because I'm gonna go into the Ultra Ball here and I need to time my jump after we pass the timer thing here. We pass that, we jump, we get through. We pass it, we jump, we get through. We pass it, we jump, we get through. We go for it on this section. It doesn't head there, but that's fine. We pass it, we jump, we get through. I'm gonna wait for the last one here because it's gonna hit a spring. Once we land on the little ball, so we're gonna go through the other side. We pass it, we jump, we get through. And that is the end of the race. Guess what's gonna have to medal so next? Nice segment. Thank you. Goodbye. And just like Sonic CD, uh, Metal Sonic has been smashed by a wall. He had an unfortunate run-in with that electric wall. But uh, it's time for the final uh, boss stage. We're going to have a moment of topsy-turviness, uh, so just be aware uh, for those of you who uh, are easily motion sick. But it won't last long because we're going to go right into uh, the Death Egg boss right after. And uh, that boss is a lot of me, and I will need to focus uh, once we get into it. So... Uh, just know that Tails' is, uh, propeller tails are tails are very sharp uh, for some reason, despite the fact that they are fur. Uh, so we're going to do our best to whack uh, the heart of the death egg uh, with Eggman doing his best M. Bison impression uh, with Tails' as tails. And Argic, if you want to explain the nuances of this boss and what your role is, that would be fantastic. I will do. So that boss to me looks like something straight out of Ekaruga. Like, it, it's straight Ekaruga here. But the plan is that I am going to be the ring gatherer. If for whatever reason we somehow manage to take damage, it is my job and only my job to gather a ring. It's also my job to make sure we don't actually take damage. Um, so we're going to come through there. Amber is going to get the side hit. I'm going to jump out. We didn't grab what? rings. This is the worst start to this boss fight. Um, this is the worst timeline. So I'm going to let you just take over there. I'm not going to get hit by anything. And then you're going to fly up, grab some rings. I'm going to come out and I did it again. I tried to jump okay. out and we hit the boss. Third time we're going to try and grab rings. Um... The, the, the boss gets harder and harder while this happens. I really hope we don't fudge this here. Uh, just prioritize grabbing I rings. Do too. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. jump out just to be safe. I'm already out, so it's fine. Uh, so if I were to die, there we go, that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, we're good. That's what we're supposed right. to do. Because if we don't have any panic rings. Panic time over. Yeah, if we don't have any rings, it's, it's panic time. I'll let you just go out, away we go. Uh, you got eye there, which is amazing. 
And that is yes. fantastic. So we're going to come through. We are about to, uh, I think we've got one more hit before we get Angry Eggman once again. Uh, so again, just Tails can fly up, gets the good angle there. Tails hits the side of it. You cannot hit the bottom of this boss. There is a metal plate that is spiked with the electricity. Do not touch it. He's now going to throw a temper tantrum. On the final tantrum here, what we're going to do is he's going to have an orange shield. We need to use the Ultra Ball to get out through the shield and then hit the boss. Once again, Amber is going to take over the lead here. I'm going to jump down, immediately go into the Ultra Ball here. And then once the Ultra Ball hits and breaks, Amber will jump and hit the boss. As long as we have rings, we are fine. There are two hits to go on this boss. On the final hit, time is coming up. So please be ready on time. So we get this hit. And then once we get this hit, we get one more hit to go. So we're on our final hit now. Eggman is going to alternate electricity between two segments, each on the inner ring here. We're going to try and damage way through our boss. And if we can do it, it is going to be a very good run. It is coming up to the final one. We hope you've enjoyed it. Let's see how this final hit goes. We're going to go up. We're coming to come down. I'm going to do the final roll. We should be okay here. Let's find out what happens as it goes through. And then run. We go on that side. Just all we know we need to think it. One more time. And then immediately jump, oh, jump, 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 Oh. I'm so thrilled right now. Oh my god. That is that is a Woo. record by five seconds. We were 10 seconds ahead coming out of the Sky Fortress yes. boss. We got some Woo. gold splits in there. Yes! That is what we want to oh. see. Oh. How are you oh feeling? My goodness. Oh, how are you feeling? My heart is pounding right now. Oh. That is incredible <laughs> right there. Oh. We did. Good. That is what the fifth world record this GDQ. Uh, we, there's been a lot of world records this GDQ. That is absolutely fantastic. And Amber, we did it in the. <laughs> you did it in the Sonic suit. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. That is one for the books. Oh, it is indeed. But right, we are not going to keep the marathon go uh, behind any longer. We do have another run coming up next for the Sonic Block. But before we go, uh, we do want to do some quick little shout outs. Again, first, thank you to everybody who donated for me to be in the Sonic suit. It is absolutely amazing. I'm glad you could indulge the silly little stuff that I do. If you love the silly little shenanigans like this, please do come and follow me over my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash argic. If you want more speed running after GDQ, I have the treat for you. Sunday, he the does. day GDQ finishes, I will be doing the Sonic Generations medley. That is a speed run of all the games that are represented in Sonic Generations action stages. Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, Sonic Adventure DX, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Sonic Heroes, Sonic 06, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, and Sonic Generations itself. It is a 10 game multi speed run. It is about 11 and a half hours long. I would love it if after GDQ, you would come and join us there. Again, that's twitch.tv forward slash argic. And where can they find you, Amber? Yeah, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Amber Cyprin, where I do a lot of Sonic stuff, uh, usually with quirky controllers or with like mods or like, you know, just unconventional ways to play Sonic games. Uh, sometimes I play Pokemon. I, I, I'm a bit of a variety mix. Sometimes I do casual, sometimes I do speedruns, sometimes I do casual speedruns. Uh, but I also do uh, Sonic 3D Blast, uh, which I have a bunch of new controllers to play that with. Um, and uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash Amber Cyprin. And also, I'm a GDQ Hotfix showrunner host. I host Never Before Seen every other Wednesday, starting usually around 10 p.m. Eastern, where we uh, platform games and categories that have never been on the main stage. So if you want more unique speedruns, please show up uh, and check that out. Check out all of our Hotfix content, because uh, speedrunning is not just twice a year, I promise you. Uh, that said, uh, one last shout out to um, my partner TGH. Uh, I love you very much. Um, he did the Oracle of Seasons run. Go watch that VOD if you haven't. And also, um, uh, thank you all again so much. And shout outs one more time to our dear departed friend, the only kid. We love you and we miss you. We hope we did but you proud. That's going to do it for us. Yeah, we hope we, we, hope did, we you did you proud. proud. 
And uh, that's going to be it for us. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Coming up next is AF Wagers with Sonic Adventure DX, where you can get, you know, more tornado action at one point. But uh, AF Wagers is going to smash it. And if you like Argic's commentary, he's going to be commentating for it. So definitely stick around. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you all so much and have a good rest of your uh, week. And I'll see you on Thursday for more hosting. What an amazing run. We are going to read a couple more donations um, while we're getting set up. Uh, we have, actually, I feel bad because I just got it, $20 from Tej that says, Hi again, AGDQ. There's nothing better than seeing my wonderful partner, Amber, and one of my super good friends, Argic the Hedgehog, take center stage at AGDQ together. Best of luck on the run, and I can't express how proud I am of both of you for how far you've come as people and as leadership models for your respective communities. Here's hoping for a record-setting donation total this GDQ for PCF. $40 from Baglior that says, here's $40 in support of Argic and Amber. Teamwork makes the dream work. I agree. Dragoon Knight, thank you for $50. They say, hey, AGDQ, donating during Sonic Block as I try to each year. Argic's costume is amazing, but I'm not going to lie. It will haunt my dreams for the foreseeable future. <laughs> I <laughs> YGG, thank you for $25. Uh, they say, this Sonic speedrun is amazing. Love the costume and love the banter. $5 from Freranox that says, the run is looking great. What a dream team. Well, Argic is more of a nightmare right now. <laughs> All right, guys, and I'm going to send you guys off to the interview with Keys are on for our Pokemon Crystal game. Take it away. Hello, AGDQ 2022 online. It's Keys are on here. Um, this is going to be an interesting interview because I'm part of this run. And joining me is 360 Chrism and Shenanigans underscore. Got to emphasize the underscore every time. We're not prepared for this interview at all, but uh, Shen's wearing some uh, Chrism merch, so uh, we're just going to fanboy about what? Chrism for about 30 seconds or so. Shen, what's your favorite thing about Chris? Oh, I mean, <laughs> what, is oh, there, no. what is there not to talk about when it comes to Chris? I mean, look at the guy. I mean, he's, he, he does music. He's so handsome. Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> can we get can back we in frame, Chris? Him? Stop moving. What are you doing? <laughs> I was gonna say, can we plug his music in chat? I'd probably get in trouble for that. I wouldn't, but well, you know, uh, if, if you follow the runners, like if you're at home and you don't follow any of us yet, if you want to follow Chris, whether now or after the run, you could find a way to get to his music there. But let's let's actually uh, kick it into semi seriousness here. So, Pokemon Crystal Randomizer is actually in GDQ. Uh, I kind of <laughs> snuck my way into this because we all submitted it, but we didn't coordinate it. You two were coordinated. I know you two have been trying to submit randomizer for Pokemon in general for a while now. So uh, how, how long have you been trying to like submit it? And like, what's what's the process kind of been for you two? Uh, let's start with Chris. Um, I mean, I think it's probably been like seven years, six, seven <laughs> years since we started submitting. And we've always just gone with whatever was the most fun at the time. Like sure. we started with just vanilla races and then eventually it turned into battleships. And now the key item rando, which is really fun. And yeah, like you said, we... We just submitted our own race, but we were also talking like, oh, but if, what if Keys is going to submit it? Like, he's going to get it. I'm like, no, it's fine. If Keys gets in two, we'll just race him. And like, it's no problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to submit Key Item Randomizer too, but you hadn't submitted yet. Uh, I, was, I was hoping that you got Key Item Randomizer in as well, because 
Right. And yeah, it turned so out, like, I saw the schedule and it was all three of us. It was like, oh, that's like even better. Yeah, like I, I was pretty excited to see that. What what happened on my end, right, was I submitted, but I submitted like at the last minute. Yeah, <laughs> so like, yeah. I, I guess like one of those like, you know, server hiccups where it didn't like quite pop up fast enough. But uh, we're, we're all here. Uh, we've all been doing randomizer for a long time now. Uh, whether it is like a vanilla race or bingos or any sort of like meme category, like we have battleships, we have, you know, the catch em alls, all that. We, did, we even did a poker rap order race before. That was absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Well, two of um, you did. I <laughs> two, two of us did, and Shen had to, had to tap out about five hours in. Um, so, with something like key item rando, like I, I can talk about it myself as well, but uh, what, are, what are some different strategies that the audience should expect us to kind of approach the game with as opposed to just, you know, playing through the game regularly. Well, Chris will be running a Hitmonchan, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, key item randomizer is really interesting because not only are we randomizing, like, the key items in the game, we're also randomizing the Pokemon, the Pokemon's move sets, uh, the trainer Pokemon. So a lot of the, at least, initial part of the game is you have to find a Pokemon that can you know, get through the game. Um, and there's all kinds of different Pokemon you can, like, we call it running a Pokemon. So you're looking for something good enough to beat the game, at least initially. And then after that, uh, you tend to focus more on the key item aspect, which is the uh, kind of the, the more complex part where you have to go around the map and uh, find all the needed key items. Because, again, some of them aren't needed and they lead to each other. Now, yeah, like, something you should know. Oh, um, oh. Okay, yeah, something you should know about the key item rando that we're using. Uh, all badges and key items are in the same pool of items. So whenever we get a badge or a key item, it will be a badge or a key item. Badges aren't just going to be laying on the floor around yeah. somewhere. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the main randomizer we're doing. Yeah, kind of, kind of going off that a little bit to folks at home who are new to this kind of randomizer for Pokemon, uh, we're specifically doing key items. There is a version of this that's called full item randomizer, which does exactly what Chris said we're not going to do. So literally any item on the ground, depending on the settings, it could be any yeah. item, any hidden item. It could even be stuff like berry trees or things that are locked behind, you know, timed events like a Saturday item yeah. or bug catching contest. I don't think it's possible for us to give a conservative enough estimate to ever submit. No. I feel like this was the this was oh, the best no. middle ground I... because like if we if we only did key items, like we'd we'd be really quick at it. So like, you know, this is like the good middle ground for us to kind of show off what these randomizers are kind of about. Um, when it comes to this particular randomizer, like key item randomizers, is there any like neat strategy that you two like um, that you don't really get to pull off in a vanilla race? Uh, starting with Chris. Neat strategies? Yeah. Um, it's, it's always interesting when you have to make a choice of... of do I keep running what I have right now? Or do I go somewhere higher level and catch something? That's always like such a risk because you never know, is there going to be good Pokemon in this area or not? Or should I just stick with what I have? And uh, some big, uh, big things early game, for example, the Squirt Bottle. We get the Squirt Bottle super early. We can get a level 20 before the first gym even. And then we're going to be going to Kanto way before you would usually go to Kanto. And there's high, high level Pokemon there too. So is it worth it to take the trip to Kanto, catch a Pokemon, potentially you know, take the train or the boat back again? Um, because we don't have Fly yet. We don't know where Fly is and the Fly, H, uh, the fly badge. Um, and that's, that's usually where I... I think my strategy is generally, if I have a good Pokemon already, even though it's low level, I'm going to try to stick to it. Sure. And I know you two are very different there. I think you two are like, get me out of this place. I'm going to get a high-level <laughs> Pokemon as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, what about yeah. you, Shen? Uh, any, any strategies that kind of stand out to you in this format? Um, I really like finding moves that are useful and like trying to use them. So like if you find Teleport or Self-Destruct, um, Self-destruct on your like main Pokemon, it might seem like it's bad, but it's a really good strategy because you can use it to warp around the game. And Fly is kind of like the meme of Key Item Randomizer. If you find Fly like 30 minutes before everyone else, then you're going to be in an amazing position to win. But you can mitigate that a lot if you find things like Teleport, Self-Destruct. Um, there's other like 
field moves that you can find, like Headbutt and Rock Smash. If you find those early, then you can get a lot of advantage because you can get higher level Pokemon to use. But um, for the most part, you're looking for methods to get around the map. And the best way to do that is fly. But if that's not an option, then finding something like Self-Destruct or uh, Teleport is really big. So it'd be cool to see if anyone finds something like that in their own. Now, for me, kind of just stealing off of like what you're talking about, fly in general is a really cool strategy to me. Uh, something that people might not realize because you don't typically get fly early is the amount of travel you can actually save with it. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if you enter Olivine and you have fly access already, you can fly to avoid yep. the rival cutscene. If you have fly before you go to Cyanwood, as soon as you get to that upper corner of the water that has Cyanwood, you could fly instead of continuing the surf. And then one strat that people might know because they might have seen a vanilla run of Crystal is once you're off the boat in Vermilion Port, you can just fly immediately to Vermilion and save time. So that's probably my favorite thing. But we, we could all talk about Crystal for hours and you know all that nonsense. But we're going to go ahead and throw it back up to the front to Edo Bean. Uh, thank you, you two, for dealing with me for even longer than you know the race that we have to do. Uh, we'll, we'll catch <laughs> you all in a couple of runs. But for now, see you later. Right. We have reached seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I need claps. I need claps in the chat, please. Thank you so much. 750k let's go we're gonna keep on donating i have a bunch of donations ten dollars for mooch float jr that says how can i not donate for our uh, our gigs oh